Yo, what's going on guys, Dorky here, and this video here is to help you guys organize your groups, increasing your chance of success, whether it's for high keys or even pugs. Ultimately, M plus is all about overcoming the hurdles as a group and not as an individual. Here are some things that would help you even if you're an experienced high key pusher. Now, the first thing I would like to talk about is pre-assigning marks for players to handle, rather than assigning the mob to the player every single pull. What does this mean? Well, for example, in my group, we always have the Rogue on Skull, Demon Hunter on X, and Mage on Blue. And by doing so, you won't ever have to call out who's kicking what or what is being stopped by who every single pull. We've had some of the highest keys done where we don't have to call a single kick on which mob and which is being stopped by who. And that is purely because we keep it very systematic. Not only does this free up the comms, but also allows your team to have an easier time recognizing their mark and handling their job on the side mark. So the rogue player, for example, always knows that they're on skull and not any other marks unless you call for it. Meaning that the leader of the group should be key binding their markers and not rely on auto markers for consistency. I am generally pretty against auto markers for many groups unless you really feel like it's too much of a hurdle. But you should definitely take this step into key binding some of these marks. And for me personally, I use alt ZXC for skull, cross, and square. Many times I'll see even in high level key groups where groups will just go into a poll and have everyone call their individual marks, which leads to a complete mess and sometimes even resulting in the key failing right away. For whoever is calling the kicks, you should always try to have a set kick order and keep it consistent. You generally want the tank going in first, meaning that they will be the first one kicking, followed by melee kicks or whichever kicks are shortest. So in our situation, it would be something like this, the tank kicks first, followed by the Demon Hunter, followed by the Rogue, and then the Mage last. Now this applies for stops too as well, like AoE stops. We would use something like Roar into Chaos Nova into DB. So when you go into a pack, you immediately know Roar is going to be the first one, then you'll have Chaos Nova for the second, and then you'll have DB as the last resort. Here's another thing I don't see enough, which is using your group's utility enough. Abilities such as Dragon's Breath from a Fire Mage, which is basically a 20 second AoE gouge, and Typhoon Ursul's Binding Shot from the Hunter, Blinding Light from Paladins. There are so many different stops and abilities that can help you kite as a tank that aren't being used enough, and I feel like there should be more players out there who are calling for these or just actively participating by using these and letting your team know when you can use these or not. When playing with a set group, talk with your teammates and figure out what their classes can and can't do. Give players separate responsibilities, meaning that classes like rogues should be assigned to certain jobs more, such as locking down a dangerous mob. You shouldn't be relying on your mages to be DBing during combust, but at the same time, if the rogue needs backup, the mage should be able to fill in. When the tank is handling a difficult pull or boss, the team should be assisting with calls. While this may be hard, try and have everyone participate in comms. Here's how I would organize my groups. The ranged DPS should be in charge of calling the kicks and stops. The melee DPS should be calling for assistance with these stops. And the tank player should be calling for the general leading and what to pull or where to go, while calling for help with kiting and externals if needed. The healer, however, should be calling for defensives being used by certain players or potion and health stone usages, as well as trying to help out with calling for mechanics that are happening. Another big one is building a relationship with your healer, whether you're a tank or a DPS. A lot of times, you should be letting your healer know when you need healing or when you need externals. Now, this could be very challenging a lot of times when it gets really hectic, but a quick tip that I would give is just always use the external on pole. As a tank, a lot of times when I'm playing with a Resto Druid, I just tell them to bark me on pole. While this may not be the most ideal in many situations, this can be extremely effective because that means that they're effectively using their cooldown on cooldown and you won't have to clutter up the comms midway into a pull or where things start to get hectic. This also means that you can just rely on your own cooldowns afterwards and not have to rely so much on having to call for stuff in the middle of it. And unless you know ahead of time that they might need it for someone else, just always use bark on pull or whatever external it may be. Use Mythic Dungeon Tools, or MDT in short, to go over routes. Try and roughly go over where you want everyone to position, where the general pathing is, and which mobs are being pulled or CC'd. In Shadowlands Season 1 especially, 
It's important for you to know your pride timings. The last thing you want is for a pride to spawn without being prepared for it, leading to a potential wipe. Sometimes you might want to try a pull that can be hard to coordinate or require a lot of kicks. The best way of executing these kind of pulls would be to look over it in MDT. Figure out where you want to group mobs, where you want certain CDs used, and who's on which mob for stops and interrupts. This may be a bit advanced, but it is important if you're playing with a static group. Our group in particular would spend hours figuring out the best pathing, how to do certain skips, cooldowns, and assigning roles. MDT is honestly the one must-have add-on. I would highly recommend spending a decent amount of time on this when it comes to pushing higher keys. Here's one last tip I can give you guys, and it is a world marker macro that you can use so that you can spam markers all over the floor. You can use this for many different situations, namely trying to lead where to go or what to do at this certain location. And in short, you want to be copying this macro here, put it on the key bind, then you want to go to your option panels in details, and under auto run code, on the very bottom, you want to copy and paste this line as well. Then you want to hit save, close this, and then either relog or reload. And remember, this only works if you're in a party. I will be putting this in the description down below if you guys want to check this out and copy it. I would highly recommend using this a lot as it has helped me in many different situations. To share some final thoughts, just really wanted to stress that the most important thing to timing higher and higher keys as a group is not the DPS or healing throughput that a group can do. It's more about how well you play and coordinate as a group. This is a very large reason for my success in BFA wherever I was a DPS or tank player. I was never of a bottom class making it harder for me to get into groups, but people valued having me in the groups whether I was on Holy DK or Bear Tank because of what I contributed to the groups. The players I played with were all exceptional, but we would have gone nowhere without this organization or leadership, and I wanted to share this with everyone so that there are more groups that are actually pushing keys the right way. Hopefully this works for you guys or your groups, but thank you all for watching. If you guys like to see more videos like this, please let me know in the comments as I have a lot more going over the dynamics or the insides of M+. Also, be sure to tune into my Twitch channel for this season's key pushing, and hope you guys have fun with pushing keys as well. Is that okay? Paints up. Create next kick on the obliterator. This is actually so rough without a consistent slow. Yep. Let me go frost. That's why Frost Mage was S tier in the beta. Hold on. And Yoda memed me for it. All my homies hit Yoda. Yo, heck, Yoda. That dude's a king. Keep grabbing this now. <laughs>